The warden said cell 11. That's this one. Oh! There's someone curled up in a ball in the back corner. Look! What's his name again? Professor Albert Hairbrain, wasn't it? Um, excuse me! Professor Hairbrain! Who are you? I'm Ryodesuke Nanahodo. I'm a defense lawyer. A lawyer! Ah! Was there something I said? Ah, a lawyer, you say? W w w would you be here uh, 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 about the experiment? Are you going to defend my hypothesis? Your hypothesis? Sorry, I don't... Yesterday's demonstration! That demonstration was... That magnificent demonstration was... It was an out and out success by anyone's calculations! But, but, but uh, despite that... No one listens! No lawyer believes in the science! When it's explained, they all leave at high velocity! <sighs> Now's probably not a good time to mention that your zeal made my con made my concentration leave for a while too. I'm very hesitant to talk to you, but God bless if I won't. Yesterday's demonstration. Let's talk about that. Um, you mentioned the demonstration yesterday. The papers have called a spectacular failure. After all, a man died in the explosion, didn't he? Ah! Yes, you could interpret the results that way if you really wanted to. Well, I, I suppose in the strictest sense. The experiment was a failure, but at the same time, it was a great success. You've lost me. I saw it with my own eyes, right there in front of me. Mr. Astor was spontaneously disassembled. Until then, everything was going exactly as my calculations as predicted. At that point, it should have been beamed to the Crystal Tower by instantaneous kinesis. However, the machine exploded. Mr. Asman, in fact, perished. Oh, that was Rio Sk saying that. Yes, I, I can't deny that part of the experiment was a failure. So what you're really saying is the large explosion that killed Mr. Asman was an accident, correct? But the big wigs had you arrested on suspicion of murder. I was responsible for a man's death. That is the immutable truth here. And for that, I wish to be punished. At once! But but Murder? Never in a million years! It, it was an accident! Simply an accident! I see. Hurley and I were talking this morning, you know. He said the situation would change completely depending on whether it was treated as an accident or murder. How exactly? Well, if it really was an accident, then the professor's machine would be kept in protective custody. On what grounds? Ah, yes. It's still established here in Britain. The Special Dispensary for Scientific Equipment Act. That one passed me by. But if the case is treated as murder, then they'll say my machine was the murder weapon, and they'll be able to pour it over as much as they like. If they examine it in detail, they'll find out how it's made, and then they'll be able to copy my idea. My prejudice hypothesis will be stolen. The machine must be protected from that at all costs. That's why it's imperative this whole incident is shown to have been an accident in tomorrow's trial. Ah, I see now. Okay. He's exhausting. I, I, I don't vibe with that quite the high level energy, but I'm still gonna do it. So in short, there was a terrible accident at the Great Exhibition show on yesterday. Yes! Or rather, no. The devil's in the details. So, strictly speaking, there was a terrible explosion. Sounds the same to me. You were demonstrating super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, weren't you? How fascinating. Humans, like all matter, are made up of particles that are held together by electrical bonds. So it must be possible, using sufficiently high voltage, to break those bonds and beam the particles through space. That's... That's it in a nutshell. That's my idea, you see? That's my basic hypothesis. Gosh, 
That's unimaginably high level science. Oh, but dare to imagine it. Dare to dream of such incredible technology. Just think, one moment I could be here in this cell and the next I could be at the Great Exhibition again. Well, yes, that would be incredible. And the next, in a mere blink of an eye, I could be at a great Parisian theater, say? The possibilities are endless. The whole of our vast planet could be within reach. So no more hiding in wardrobes on rocky seas for 50 days. Hmm, I don't really see it like that. What do you mean, Iris? Well, if you could travel anywhere in the world instantly, the planet wouldn't really seem vast anymore, would it? I think it would feel like it had shrunk. My word! That's that's exactly right! What, what are the implications? What does this mean? Oops, that got Professor Bunny Brain really worried by the look of it. Clearly, this is yet another case of just because you can doesn't mean you should, I suppose. The point is, my calculations are flawless. The science works! But without a practical demonstration, it means nothing. And that's always the fly in the ointment. What? Because practical demonstration costs a lot of money. Money that young scientists like you don't have. That's... that's exactly it, yes. Hurley's always complaining about it. He says the government should invest more in science. Well, anyway, I bumped into him at the right time. I met the well-known investor, Mr. Asman. The victim who died in yesterday's terrible accident, you mean? All right, let's let's talk about the victim. We'll we'll get to the Reapers first the years in a minute. The full name of the man who died in yesterday's answer, Mr. Odie Asman, wasn't it? What exactly was the relationship with the man? He first visited me in my laboratory in Germany a year ago now. He said he wanted to invest in my Immaculate Hypothesis. I thank my lucky stars. I see. So you hadn't really known each other until then. Money for scientific research. I'm so envious. As far as I was concerned, the man was an angel. Oh, really? An archangel, even. He was prepared to fund a practical demonstration for my hypothesis for presentation at the Great Submission. And if that went well, I could expect additional financial support for my research from the British government. Mr. Aspen provided me with money and an exceptional engineer. He produced a machine to my precise specifications. But then your dreams were blown to dust in one enormous explosion. As you can see, I owed everything to Mr. Asman. I would never, ever have thought of taking the man's life. Well, he seems genuine enough. I don't think he's lying. Alright, well, now that we've gotten all the facts straightened out, how was the time of the Reaper in college? I understand Lord Van Zeeks is a friend of yours from university days. Yes, that's right. He was studying law whilst I was studying science. What was he like back then? Hmm, a good question. Unassuming, gentlemanly, and all around nice fellow, really. Sorry, I... I think you misheard me. I'm talking about the cold-hearted, merciless prosecutor, Barrick Van Zeeks. What was he like when he was at university? Talk about a leading question, Runo. As I said, an unassuming, extremely pleasant gentleman. After all, he is the little darling of the Van Zeeks family, with all its great aristocratic origins. I... I didn't realize he had quite such a noble blood. That does not remotely surprise me. You saw the barrels of wine in his office? Little darling? It was a bit of a shock when I came back to Britain and learned what he'd become. The Reaper the Bailey, no less. Yes, that's right. I did hear, though, that there was a very big event in his life that completely changed him after graduation. Really? What sort of event? Ah! 
I'm... I'm sorry. But I don't know anymore. I wasn't in the country at the time. I was in Germany already. Oh. Yes, of course. If he's heard all about the Reaper... I really don't have the heart to tell him that Lord Van Cease will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow. So, Professor, let me just make absolutely sure I've understood you properly. The huge explosion that occurred yesterday, that was an accident, you're saying? You had no intent to harm the victim, who was in fact the sole investor in your work, is that correct? As correct as two squared is four, I swear it! Yes, it's true that the man perished in a machine of my invention. So I know that I'm far from blameless in all this, but still! I would never use my discoveries, my inventions, to take a person's life! Not in a centillion years! I'm a man of science! It's all I know! You have to believe me, please! Do you believe me? Do you believe in my hypothesis? Science is the pure pursuit of truth, you know? I've always believed that, all my life! I'm afraid I don't know much about science, or your theories. But I do believe you, and I will fight to prove your innocence with all my might. I'm a man of the law. It's all I know. You have to believe me, please. When I went to live in Germany after I graduated, I learned something very important. Nationality, class, lineage, none of that matters. As long as you try your hardest, you can achieve anything. Thank you for that, Professor. And thank you in advance for defending me tomorrow in court. All right, Runo. It's time! Time to visit the Great Exhibition! Sorry? Well, that's where the incident happened, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it, that's true. Time to investigate at last. Alright. One more place to go, probably. I'm already seeing things to look at. Why is there just a big crossbow next to the tree? Ugh. The showgrounds are a little too big for my liking. We've been walking around in dense crowns for two hours now, and I felt myself swooning three times. There are a lot of people, aren't there? I've almost been trodden on three times, too. Be careful, won't you, Iris? Don't let go of my hand. We finally made it through the throngs, though, by the look of it. Here we are, underneath the public experimentation stage where the explosion happened yesterday. Ah, jeez! What's that? I can hear voices from on the stage. It sounds like an argument. Right! I've had it with you this time! I'm warning you! I'll arrest you in a minute! Gina! Oh yeah? Go on, Spectre, give it a shot! You got no evidence and you know it! Wait, I know those voices. You've got a cheat of math on you, young lady, but a night in the cell will teach you some manners. Just try it, I dare you! If you want that beggar chance rammed down your throat! You should not threaten a police officer. Yo, who, Greg Z, what are you doing up there? Ah! Ah! It's you! Here! You're here! Here you are! You! Here! Your ladyship! How are you, ladyship? I do hope you're well, your ladyship. Does that make her three times a lady? I'm not well at all. It's far too busy everywhere. Ha ha! I wanted to ride in a balloon, but there was a three hour queue. Unbelievable! I'll go to have a word for you at once, your ladyship. You'll be flying as high as a kite in no time once I pull some strings for you. Tobias Gregson, an inspector of Scotland Yard. We already know this. 
Until recently, he was suspended from duty, but it would appear he's back in action now. Ah, okay, that's fair. He's actually quite well known, appearing as he does in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And for that reason, he can't say a word wrong to the story's author, Iris. But there are limits, surely. Or there should be. Watch it, sunshine! This, sorry? What gives, then? Don't tell me you're on this case. Yes, I'm at you for the defense. So we're here to investigate. Hmm. Dear me, that's the situation, is it? Is it really that troubling? <laughs> a measly five bulb? Tell all you got? You're a lawyer, ain't you? You can sound to carry a bit more copper around in your pockets, Mr. Nara Odo. What? Hey! That's my last bit of spending money, that is. You can have it back, but I'll have to charge you for all the bother. Three bob. No. This is Gina Lestrade, a pickpocket or diver, born and bred in the east end of London. In the case that led to my own suspension six months ago, this is the young girl I was defending in court. What's your problem, eh? Oh no! Diver? Pickpocket? What's all the name calling? Can everyone read my mind? You want a bag of chips running down your throat and all, do ya? I... I thought you were proud to be a diver, Gina. You were just uh, arguing with Inspector Gregson about it, weren't you? I seen you've been up to your usual tricks here at the showground. I didn't know where to talk to a lady, Otto. Half a year's a long time. People can change. I'm an apprentice now. Learn to be a Scotland Yard detective. So you'll have to call me what everyone else does. It's better Lestrade now. Oh, good for you! Unless you saw that badge. In... Inspector! That badge is homemade, surely. Oh, well. God bless, Gina! The inspector part is entirely accurate. No one calls her that. For what it's worth, anyway. Investigating is off the cards for all of us. What's that supposed to mean? Right, well, I'll be back up top. You hold the fort down here, alright? Right. So. Ah, they're working together. That's cute. This... This raises a lot of questions. Let's talk! More conversations! I miss all these characters. It was eight months ago now that I first encountered Gina. He connected with the case I was working on. At the time, she was living in the East End with a group of other orphans. She helped all of them survive by pickpocketing, but then she got embroiled in a murder. I had a lot of time to think in prison. I realized I couldn't go on like I was. The diver in weren't working out. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear it, Ginny. Well done. So, you went from being a pickpocket to a detective? You got it. Good, hit it. Inspector Lestrade. Sounds like something out of a book, eh? Talk about a sea change. And then there's Iris' old man to think about. Iris' father, you mean? Yeah. Promised her, didn't I? I said I'd get to all the police force around the world to pull out all stops looking for him. Just a small promise, then. Nothing serious. Oh, Jeannie, you're so sweet. So anyway, that's how I, I had to go to test for Scotland Yard. Only trouble is, I don't read so well, do I? Just a small problem, nothing serious. And that's when Hurley approached Gregsy and asked for help. So the inspector said he'd take full responsibility for Ginny and make her a sort of apprentice. That was very magnanimous of Inspector Gregson. And brave. Well, you know Hurley. He enjoys finding ways to make people do what he wants. The great detective likes digging for dirt, in other words. So, long and short of it is, 
If you got questions about the case, you can ask Inspector Lestrade. Right then, Inspector. Actually, there's still a big mystery surrounding Gina, isn't there? Oh, what, Runa, what? Well, six months ago, Gina was the defendant in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper. A trial in which she was found not guilty, and yet here she is still. Come on! You're not still on about that, are you? Legend of the Reaper, whatever it's called. Cool! You yeah, don't have to worry, I know. If I didn't half worry, there probably would be a whole lot of you left. <laughs> it's like I told you before, ain't it? The Reaper's kind of like I'm upstairs, so he knows what I'm like on the inside. Dad, I ain't really done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong might be stretching a point. What about Mr. Natsume in Japan? He's perfectly fine, isn't he? Well, that's true. Perhaps the Reaper is more discerning than I thought. Exactly! So I ain't worried. I'm totally fine! I guess so. Let's talk about yesterday's incident. What do you know? Cool. It was out of this world, it was. The brainy bloke pulled a bunch of levers on this machine and suddenly it started billowing smoke. Then it just went pop. I ain't seen better experiment here yet. Sorry? You mean you saw it, Ginny? With your own eyes? Yeah, of course. The boss in charge, eh, Eddie? Of keeping everything run smooth, I mean. The boss means Peter Gregson, I suppose. That's going to take some getting used to. So all I have to say is that I'm on duty, and I can do whatever I want to. Get this! I was up in one of the flying balloons when it happened, watching it from above! No! You're so lucky, Ginny. Maybe I should join Scotland Yard, too. Yeah, do it! You know how to put the boss in his place already, right, Eris? You have no trouble at all. Then it's settled. When do I start? No, no, no. You can't join Scotland Yard, Iris. We'll see. Anyway, what I don't understand is this. If the machine exploded so spectacularly, how can Professor Bunny Brain still be claiming that his experiment was a success? Oh, right. Well, it was a success, in a way. It was? How could it have been? How? Surely after the whole machine blew up, no one could call the experiment a success. So like I said, it did sort of work. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of smoke and all that whopping great bang. But where do you think they found the victim's body, eh? In the crystal tower over there. What? In the tower? You can see for yourself, can't you? Up there above the scaffold. Oh! Where all the glass is broken, you mean? Yeah, the cage what the victim got in to start with. Really did get beamed through the air to, or whatever, and land all the way over there. So, you see, it did kind of work, didn't it? Okay, so it could have been that case. Um, it also could have just been the force of the explosion. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll work that out later. What? I, I don't believe it. I mean, don't get the ins and outs of it, but anything's possible, right? With science. Oh, I'll tell you what. You can have this. It's a plan of the experiment they drew up at the yard. Are, are you sure? Yeah, go on. I had three bob over you before, so fair's fair. Yes, I didn't actually give that to you, did I? All right, experiment sketch. A diagram showing the relative positions of the crystal tower and Professor Hairbrain's machine that exploded. All right, what about the investigation? Something Inspector Gregson said before seemed a little strange. For what well, it's what worth, it's anyway. anyway. Investigating is off the off cards for all of us. Yes, naughty old Gregsy ran off after that without explaining himself. Oh, right, that. The boss said no one's allowed to investigate that weird machine what blew up yesterday. Well, that's not fair. Representing the defendant. 
In that case, could you at least tell us what you've learned from your investigations? Nah, you're not getting it. We ain't allowed to investigate neither. Why? What did the boss call him again? The Forensic Investigation Team, I think? Anyway, apart from them lot, no one's allowed to lay a finger on the scene. Bit funny, ain't it? Stevens Cotton Yard's own detectives can't investigate. Yes, I've never heard something like that before. I thought I could have again at the quiet though, but the boss caught me at it. You probably ought to heard him give me an earful about before from down here, didn't you? It's not bleeding fair. I think you were giving him as much of an earful back as I remember it. Yeah, well, sometimes I think it's all them chips what make him so stubborn. You say some to him, Otto. Go on, see if you can get through to him. He's up on the platform above us, is he? Where the machine exploded is. We can try, can't we, Bruno? Greg's will listen to us. Okay, well, can I examine anything here? Mainly that? Ah, looks as though somebody dropped something behind the tree just here. Dropped or hid? What is this? Some part of the machine exploded? Maybe. It could have fallen from the platform above the blast, perhaps. What's going on, on here? Oh, nothing. I think I'll hang on to this, just in case. Serious contraption has been entered the core record. A very curious device found behind a tree under experimentation stage at the exhibition grounds. Almost as if it's been hidden there deliberately. Alright, I'm just gonna take that. Uh, let's see what these guys are doing here. The Crystal Tower. It's certainly an apt name. It was built to be the focal point of the exhibition. And it definitely is, being so tall and with all that glass. I can't imagine a building like this ever being erected in Japan. Oh, uh, just wait. There are lots of exhibits inside the tower as well, apparently. Of course, there's been an observation deck, but there's also an art gallery, a zoo, and a museum. But I heard you have to queue for three hours just to get through the doors. Well, at the moment, the shattered glass from the failed experiment may well be the biggest draw. And thanks to that accident, the whole tower is shut. Suddenly, it's not the crystal tower anymore, but the crystal glass shower. Apparently, everyone's taking to the skies now to look down the disaster area from above instead. But there's a three-hour queue to go up in the balloon now. Wanderers must be very patient people. All right. Let's see here. This platform must have been set up for the experiment, I suppose. It's very high up. About 30 feet above the ground, apparently. That's what a policeman I just spoke to said. I don't really understand feet very well. We don't use them in Japan. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. It's about 9 meters. But soon you'll have been in London a year, Runo. It's time to get used to our measurements. Yes, well... This thing is so tall, spectators at the front would just have seen a wall and nothing else. They probably thought they'd secure the best spot to watch from, only to be disappointed. There's a saying, Japan. The darkest spot is right under the lighthouse. I feel like it probably applies here. Oh, there's one more thing to examine here. Right, all the debris. For some reason, the ground is damaged in this spot. Look. Almost as if there was a fire here or something. Yes, if you look closely, there's some scattered ash and burnt embers, too. Well, I suppose there was a big explosion just above here. People probably wouldn't bat an eyelid at a small fire like this would have been. I'm not sure we English can quite are quite that laid back, Bruno. Ah, there. That's where the cove ended up after its instant kinesis, or whatever they call it. Dead, of course. And yet they're calling the experiment a success? What's the wooden scaffold there for? The coppers, our lads, set that up after the incident happened. To get the body down, I think. Don't know, really. 
Didn't you help to erect the scaffold then? Nah, look how Diddy's more my thing. Wander around the exhibition, keeping a lookout for the fun stuff. Mind Gregson doesn't hear you saying that, or he'll give you the boot. It's incredible though, isn't it? I mean, could the victim really have bridged that gap by some sort of invisible kinesis? Ah, the balloons can be examined. I've been meaning to ask you for a while now, but what are those funny round blobs floating in the sky? Oh, they're the flying balloons I've been talking about. I want to go up in one so much. I've... I've read about situations like this in magazine about strange phenomena. C creatures from outer space c coming around, flying objects t t to attack Earth! What? I I suppose inhabitants of uh, other plants are bound to be interested in a great exhibition. This that this is it, Iris! It's happening! It's not. Don't worry. I'll explain all to you later over a nice cup of tea, Runo. Oh wait, well, not what I thought I was gonna get out of that, but I don't regret it. There we go. These stairs obviously lead to the stage above. We should go up there and investigate the exact spot where the experiment was being conducted. That is an impressive machine. To be certain, or at least it looks impressive. So that's it, is it? Machine that blew up. Oh, it must have been a magnificent explosion, and I've seen my fair share. You've seen things like this before, you mean? Of course! Hurley's always seen experiments to end in a bang. In fact, in his own words, explosions are the very essence of chemistry! Ah, that might explain the smell of burning that frequently comes from wafting up the stairs. One time, he made something like that explode with such force, it took the roof off the building. I wish you'd been there to see it, Runo. It's hard to get too excited about that, given that I now live in the roof. Well, anyway, that's enough about that. It's time to investigate! Can we? Ah, oh, look, it's Peter Gregson's over there. He seems to be deep in thought about something, whilst eyeing up the machine carefully. Really? He just looks confused to me. Alright, well, let's go ahead and examine Gregson first. It ripped itself apart magnificently, didn't it? Magnificently and mercilessly. So someone stands in the middle of the machine to be disassembled and then beamed through the air. Yes, beamed. Not blasted. That's the point. Yes, that part's crucial, really. Is something like that even possible though, Iris? Oh, Runo, I'm just a child. How should I know? You know what? That, that's fair, but you're also smart. So, shut up. A child when it suits you, you mean. From what I can tell, I think if you were to pull this lever- STOP! Don't touch that! Okay. <laughs> that was practically instantaneous. Kinesis in the way you flew over just now, Gregsy. Please, your ladyship, I didn't mean to startle you, but I can't let you touch anything up here. So sorry, you can have some of my latest special blend to make up for it. Ah, wonderful! This stuff really is wonderful. It's just like old times, this is... We're representing Professor Hairbrain and Cortemar Inspector. So we should be allowed to examine the scene. Ha! Listen, Sunshine, even I'm not allowed to touch anything up here. It's a blasted special dispenser for scientific equipment act to blame. It's driving me potty. Oh, yes, a special dispensation. Professor mentioned that too. More red tapes all we need. 
I don't know what the government thinks is playing at sometimes. But we're allowed to just look, aren't we? Eh? Surely that's all right, isn't it, Gregsy? Of course, your ladyship. Anything you say, your ladyship. But please don't get your dainty hands dirty, will you? Don't worry. We wouldn't dream of touching anything, wouldn't we, Bruno? She really knows how to get what she wants. Let's, uh... Let's talk to Gregson, old, but, uh, old chap, old pal. Using high-voltage electricity to somehow disassemble a man's body, and then beam him across to the Crystal Tower, it's an extraordinary thing to attempt, especially in public. True, it was by far the most unusual of the experiments planned for the exhibition, mind. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised it was allowed. Carry out something so dangerous with so many spectators present, I mean. The government's doing everything it can to promote new science and technology at the moment. They're more worried about being ahead of the game than the odd spot of public safety and infringements. If they can be the first to develop some new technology, it makes Britain more powerful in the future, you see? Yes, I suppose that's true, in a way. So the powers that be are placed in a heavy emphasis on scientists' rights at the moment. What sort of rights? They're making it so that any theories the brains have remain their legal property, as it were. Right through developing it into practical idea and then going into production. Which is the inferior reason as coppers aren't allowed to touch this crime scene. Because the new high fault and special dispensary for scientific equipment act forbids it. Ah, I see now. The only people with permission to investigate here are from some brand new department at the yard. The Forensic Investigation Team, it's called. We've been relegated to keeping guard. The Forensic Investigation Team. Any old fool can see that this heap of scrap metal was a sham to begin with. But just because it says side of equipment on the paperwork, we can't do a flaming thing with it. Poor Gregzy. He's very head up, isn't he? Let's talk about that special little dispensation, which is a word that I definitely have not failed to read every time. Remind me again, what's this new legal act that means we're not allowed to touch the scene here? Are you having to meet Aunt Addie Sunshine? It's Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. Hmm, yes, I think Hurley mentioned that recently, but with a real twinkle in his eye, as I remember. I'm sure he did, your ladyship. I'm sure he did. Pass especially for this great exhibition, it was. All scientists have to do is present their ideas or invention to some suits in the civil service. And if it gets rubber stamped, that's a guarantee of rights to maintain the invention's confidentiality. What does that really mean? Think about it. Think of all the world changing new inventions on display every day at this exhibition. Although a good half of them are a load of cobblers, if you ask me put for by shammers like yourself. Hey! Thanks for that. Oh, I love how absurd some of the inventions here are. It's all so fun. It might be fun to you, but a member of the forest has to be present at every single demonstration. Can you imagine, eh? Hang on, hang science, that's what I say. Oh, I don't think so. That sounds like my dream job. You'd soon think otherwise after spending a day guarding all these shammers, bogus contraptions. But if they're all bogus, how could anyone hope to demonstrate them? There'd be no point. Yeah, well... There's a point, sadly. Sorry? Thanks for another of our government's bright ideas. If any theory invention is deemed to show potential, the government hands out a research grant. The scientist gets funding? Exactly. And that's what they're all after. All these shammers coming from far away to clog up Hyde Park. And who has to keep them all safe, eh? Who has to smile politely and welcome them? Us coppers, that's who. So you can see why I say it now, can't you? Hang sight! Hang it! Oh, maybe I can see your point. 
All right, what are your thoughts on Professor Hairbrain? Apparently, Professor Hairbrain lives and works in Germany, now conducting his research. That's right. Came back to Britain especially for the Great Exhibition, as I understand it. Probably after one of the government's research grants. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, we learned something else about the professor earlier today. About his time and further education. It turns out he was at university with someone we both know. Lord Van Zeeks. What? What's that? That's news to me. But, but if Van Zeeks mans the prosecution, that's the accused, the professor's fate is... Sealed? Because the Reaper will get him one way or another. Blimey. That man's beyond me. I don't know what goes on in that head of his. Talking of Van Zeeks, this morning's paper ran the story of him being attacked. Read that? Oh, yes. But Mr. Reaper is completely fine. Nothing to worry about. Yes, right. Glad to hear it. Still, the Reaper, huh? How long is that business gonna keep up, I wonder? What do you know, Grigsy? The victim of this case, the investor, Mr. Asman. He was another of the Reaper's victims, or so I heard. Lord Baron Fenzix is a top-class prosecutor. But even he can't always push the right verdict through. Sometimes justice can't win. Yes, I've heard about jurors being bribed and evidence being falsified. And that's how the notion of the Reaper of the Bailey came about, isn't it? Obviously, Scotland Yard suspected Fenzix initially. We all assumed he was taking matters into his own hands if he failed to seal the deal in court. Although the man himself denies that charge. Well, we've done a very thorough investigation, and the conclusion we reached... ...is that Lord Van Zeeks is in no way related to the deaths of those people outside the courtroom. There's no question in my mind. I'd stake my reputation on it, I would. You've staked your reputation on a lot of things, and look where that ended up. But if that's the true, then how do you explain it? All those defendants couldn't just have coincidentally died if nobody killed them. I know that, but I can't explain it. It's a mystery after all, isn't it? That's the whole point of the Reaper. Professor Hairbrain mentioned something else. He said that at university, Lord Van Dietz was a totally different person. Easygoing and kind. You what? He said that it was after they both graduated that something happened to change the man. Do you have any idea what it was? No clue. Really? Look, I've got my hands full watching over this frustrating crime scene. Why don't you go and make a nuisance of yourself elsewhere, eh? Alright, well, I think that's all we're going to get out of him for now. Let's see what all we can examine here. Considering how badly damaged everything is, Professor Hairbrain was lucky to escape unscathed, I'd say. We should have a good look around this machine while we can, I think. Touch anything, I'll make sure I'll kill you before I get started on myself, you hear? Jesus! I, I won't touch a thing, I promise, so please, spare a thought for your digestion. Anyway, do you really think this machine could actually disassemble people that the professor claims? He asks, looking totally incredulous. Give it a rest, sunshine. If we were allowed to examine all this bleeding scrap metal, maybe we can answer that question. But we can't, can we? Because of the annoying rules, you mean? Exactly! The annoying, obstructive, flaming rules! Oh. Look at the base of the machine there. Oh yes! There's a tool of some kind poking through the wire mesh. It's... a screwdriver, I think. Oh! Isn't it a lovely one? The handle's on the shape of a capital letter A! It is? Oh yes, you're right. What's the matter with you?! Don't touch anything I said! Touch anything I'll make sure I'll kill before you get to my, myself, I said! Yes, yes, I understand, sorry! I only touched a teeny weeny bit. Oh, uh, Gregsy, I'm very curious about the screwdriver. Really, very, very curious.
Crush the ship, just a clever lady ship, fancy spot and something like this. But I'm afraid I can't let you have it. But Runa found it first. I assure you, I'll investigate it thoroughly. Everyone's just fading out of existence today. He's gone off with it. Is he allowed to do that? Hmm. That was very mean, I'm afraid. Inspector Gregson is going to make a very clumsy, embarrassing mistake in the next month's installment now. Iris. Just one infraction. That's all it takes for Iris to just toss Gregson under the bus. Poor Gregsy. Well, at least we can investigate other things, maybe? No, there really doesn't seem to be anything else to investigate at the moment. Oh, wait. There's the, 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 there's this little whatever. That amazing horde-shaped device is pointing towards the Crystal Tower. I suppose once people are disassembled by the machine, they're shot out of that thing to wherever they're going. I don't think it was supposed to shoot anything, Runo. That was set up to beam people to the Crystal Tower where they'd be reconstructed in their original form. Well, I don't like the look of it. If it was as amazing as it looks, the accident wouldn't have happened in the first place, of course. I suppose that's true, yes. But nothing ever goes according to plan, does it? More balloons. So those are people carrying balloons, dangling silently in the skies over London. I always thought the day would come when humans would discover how to fly. But I never imagined it would involve them being suspended from colorful, floating, to merry handballs. I'm sure it must feel amazing being up there among the clouds. Let's take a ride together, Runo, please. If I'm being perfectly honest, I would like to try it. But without a cast iron guarantee that the thing won't plummet to the ground, I'm too scared. Oh well, in that case, I should tell you what Hurley said. It's physically impossible for a flying balloon to plummet to the ground, as long as it doesn't explode. Thanks. Yes, call me crazy, but I think the exploding part might play on my mind a little. Oh, there's something here to examine. Ah, there's some sort of lever here. It is a crossbow! What the- what is this? It- it looks like a cross between a bow and a gun! I think it's probably used for the same thing, too. It's a crossbow! Interesting. Okay, so now we've established it as a crossbow. Okay, so this is a tricky thing. So, we're gonna do this real quick. Because uh, for us to make progress, we need to move somewhere else. So we're just gonna move here. And then we're gonna move back to the experimentation stage. This was not examined. Oh my god, I thought it was part of the debris. Oh look, what's this? A ripped piece of cloth? Hmm, it's not like any feather I've ever seen before. It's very thick and stiff, and looks extremely durable. It's canvas, I think, with some sort of rubber backing. And the edges appear to be a bit charred as well. Maybe that means it's something to do with the explosion? Let's make a note of Ginny's um, mid yawn. Okay. Torn piece of canvas, light material backed with rubber that was found on the experimentation stage at exhibition grounds. There are scorched marks at the edges. There we go. Runo, Runo, listen. What? What is it? I've been thinking. Hurley might know something, mightn't he? Uh, about what? About Mr. Reaper! About what happened to Lord Van Seeks, you mean? Because it sounds like something very significant occurred after he graduated from university. Something that completely changed his life. 
Maybe, but I have no idea where to find Mr. Schultz at the moment. He's in the middle of some big case, isn't he? Here, this is what you need. What's this? Some kind of entrance ticket? Madam Tuss spells. Is this supposed to mean something to me? You don't know it? It's the most popular attraction in London at the moment. It's very close to Baker Street, actually. We could go now if you like. No, no, we don't have time for visiting attractions today, Iris. We have a big trial tomorrow. But that's where Hurley is. What? At, at this popular London attraction? Yes. How is that that you know where he is? Hurley told me, but he told me to keep it a secret from you, Bruno. Madame Tuspels. I don't see how it could be related to the case we're investigating here, but then... Stranger things have happened, and when they happen, Mr. Sholmes is usually at the heart of them. Alright, well. Now that we got that all worked out, let's get out of here.